phone calls, especially through Zoom. It's always good to peep, to actually see people through Zoom and see, um, I guess, their facial cues, like how yeah. um, you get a lot from looking at someone, if they're interested yeah. or not. So with, it's difficult for me personally, it's much, much easier to shake someone's hand, sit down next to them, hand them over a packet, and kind of just just organically start the conversation, get to know them, build that trust and rapport, and then get into business. Um, it's a little tougher nowadays with Zoom because people are just kind of, they want to be more efficient. They want to, they're already home. They're not in the office. People, tend, I believe people tend to, um, when they meet me outside of the office, to stay with me a little longer because they want to stay out of the office a little longer. But Zoom calls are probably, I have another call next, like in the next half hour. So I have less time with them. And me not being able to physically go to networking events has been um, probably the most difficult part because I can't find prospects. Okay. So I've been going through my old pipeline recently or so, since we've been quarantined or shelter in place. Thank you, Eugene, for sharing. So I believe that you pointed out a few things. Communication is different. Uh, building relationships is uh, different now. And um, I think the last thing that you said was uh, in terms of how to network. Well, now we're doing a lot of that remotely. So yes, those can be challenges to working remotely, but they also can, uh, working remotely can also be a new opportunity. One, for us to learn a new way of working with one another, for exactly. us to learn uh, a new skill set of how to build those relationships, and we're definitely going to address those. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. And then so, there were two more comments. Yes, um, ma'am. The one was thinking you have to stay in front of the computer all day, which uh -huh. I think is very true. And then... Yeah. <laughs> Balancing eating macaroons with lots of those cold water. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we are all having uh, similar experiences. Uh, I, I've been going back and forth to my refrigerator and I have to say to myself that the same things are there. Like it's just become a habit. But uh, in addition to uh, some of the productivity challenges that we may be facing, I'm... Um, surprised to hear <laughs> that none of you or none of the comments talked about the mental challenges. So some of the major challenges that individuals who work, work remotely have shared is, um, is wellness related. So oh, wait, maybe that's us. That's us, like staying away from the refrigerator. 22% can't unplug 19% feel lonely, and some are just not, they can't stay motivated. So those are some of the common challenges that have been recognized in addition to some of the things that we have shared. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about some productivity solutions and then some ways to inspire uh, your environment so that you can perform at your best. And the first productivity solution is in order to have success, regardless of a crisis, or um, even if we were out and the sun was shining and there was no virus, you have to create a schedule for yourself. Create a, a way to develop your goals and then act on them. Individuals, who uh, create a schedule are setting up ways for them to start their day. Because the way you start your day matters. And if you manage your day, then you will be able to manage your emotions and of course your actions. So it helps you um, not to be last. Because if you create a daily plan, then that can help you to minimize your anxiety and it increases your productivity. So what I tell individuals to do is you need to think about uh, what you need to get done on a specific day. So let's say you think about what you have to get done on Monday and then 
work backwards. So what do I need to have what do I need to do on Monday that will get me to my weekly goal? And that structure helps me to uh, prioritize tasks. It will help you to define what your task should be. Um, you can add a time frame, ways that you're going to measure how well that you're doing and the resources that you need. But it's also very helpful for you to be able to track your time. Because some of the issues that we said people were having was maybe overworking, um, you know, don't have a set stop time. So uh, there's challenges in that way. So when you are able to track your time and manage your time better and be accountable for what you're getting done and have a schedule on how to get it done and what you're doing, that helps you to be more productive. And um, I found some information that I thought was really helpful and I've been implementing it into uh, my daily work. And that is the rule of 52 and 17. Has anybody heard that rule before, the rule of 52 and 17? Well, Death Time, which is an app, uh, was evaluated uh, to study the habits of the most productive people. So, you know, everybody puts in how they're spending their time into this app. And what they found was that the most successful 10% of individuals who use that app, they took effective breaks. So whenever I am looking to um, increase my productivity, the first thing I have to do, I have to have a clear mind. I, that helps me with decision making. So sometimes we're working and working and then everything, you know, I start to lose um, new ideas because literally my mind starts to get a little worn down. But with this study that they did, that top 10% took breaks every 52 minutes for 17 minutes. And you're probably saying, but I'll never get anything done <laughs> if every hour I'm taking almost a 20 minute break. But that increased their productivity significantly. This was, this was proven. And not only that, um, another finding was that the most productive employees don't work a full eight hours. Why do you think that is? Why do you think the most productive folks don't work a, a full eight hours? Anybody? Efficient? Exactly. Because they um, are able to work smarter. So you ever know that person that's like always like buzzing around the office and you're like, well, how do they ever get anything done? But they get stuff done. That's because they have time left over because they work smart. So what do they do? They make sure that they, I'm trying to get to my next slide. They make sure that they're creating goals and, and being intentional about how they start their day. <laughs> so how do you start your day? Anybody want to share? What is it that you do to get started in the morning? Brush my teeth, take a shower. Well, in terms of, okay, so that's your morning routine, brushing your teeth and taking a shower. Yeah. But, but I, I mean, in terms of uh, how do you spark yourself? Uh, that's your question. A lot of people don't. Most people get up and brush their teeth and wash their face and go about their day. What I do and what experts and the most successful people do, and that's where I get it from, is you have to be intentional. So I start my day with prayer or meditation. I start my day watching as much inspirational TV, YouTube that I possibly can. All of my social media settings are to follow people who share inspirational information or, or just like a Facebook page that always is positive because I have to have my mind set focused on success. So I need to wake up with vigor. Now, when I turn on the news, it could easily go, Bruh! but because I've already been intentional on, this is what 
I want to get done and I got the mindset to do it, I'm able to compartmentalize. And so I don't stay focused on that. I find when I'm having challenges, it's because I took my mind off of my goal. So if I'm working throughout the day and I used to have the TV in the background, uh, the, the, the news on in the background, and then I would find that I would start getting depressed. And I'd look around and say, well, what has changed in my atmosphere? Oh, I got, I got you know, death and destruction on. <laughs> so I need to turn that off because it's not helping me to focus on my goals. So be intentional about how you start your day. And I'm gonna tell you um, somebody good to follow. Anybody ever hear of Tom Bailu? It's like B-I-L-E-U-Y. He has a show called Impact Theory. Watch that in the mornings. You'll, 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 you'll be pumped up. So how you start your day matters. Uh, start with reflections. Start with the top three goals that you want to accomplish and keep going. Another way to be productive is to um, be intentional um, about how you work. So implement processes on how you get your work done. What programs, what systems, what resources do you need to be efficient? So that's what you do. You say, okay, today I'm gonna get X done and to get that done, I'll need this program to contact this person to uh, develop this process. And we have so many tools that can help us. Well, we've got Zoom, we're on that now, but there are organizational tools like Slack, which is a tool that helps you communicate with um, other people. And it actually will categorize your conversations and your projects. There's Trello, the Asana, Dropbox. We have so many different tools. And when I shifted from a corporate workplace to starting my own business and working at home by myself uh, seven years ago, what the first thing I did was say, okay, Adrian, how are you gonna get this done? You're by yourself. You don't have someone to call to do X, Y, and Z. I had to set up processes on how I got my work completed. I had to make sure I had the right tools and programs to get it done. And then once I started working, well, things started to flow. So think about what you wanna get accomplished and then what do you need? And it's like setting yourself up. Almost like when you're developing a plan, you know, the hard work is building the plan. It takes time in the beginning. But once you get into a rhythm, you are chugging along. That's why um, these folks can be very successful and you can too. Uh, what communication tools are you using? That is um, very important to think about. We have a video, email, chat, phone, text. Some of the challenges that people are having is that um, Eugene shared a little bit. It's like, you know, I used to, you know, talk to people and shake their hand and I could uh, see their body cues and that sort of thing. And now, you know, something where I would walk over to someone's desk and chat with them about, am I able to text them? You know, individuals are challenged on how they should be communicating. So here's my general recommendation on that. You want to consider the task, consider what needs to be accomplished and by when, and then who you're communicating with. So you want to be mindful of the sender. So based on your content and who you're communicating with, one thing you can do is ask them, what's your preferred way of communication while we're in this craziness? Is it okay to uh, send you a text message? Don't be offended. Will you be offended if I send you a, te uh, a chat message at nine o'clock at night? Not that you're, I'm expecting you to answer, but you know, sometimes you've got this idea or you wanna share this information, it's just easier and faster to do it that way. Just ask folks. And then that's how um, you will learn. But also, uh, if you're communicating an email, I had one client that called and said, help us. I was like, oh goodness, what is going on? And she, she said, our leader is just forwarding everything. That's his main way of communicating. So he'll get to, 
and she just forwards, forwards, forwards. So everybody is like information overload with this person. Like, what is he sending now? What happens when you do that is, number one, you're overloading people with information that might not be helpful, productive, useful, or pertinent to them. But the other thing is your communications then lose value. People are like, okay, another email from Adrian, you know? So you want to be mindful of the tools that you're using and who you're communicating with and what it is. The other thing about your communications is uh, to be explicit. I said, well, go back to that leader because, you know, that person uh, was unavailable uh, for me to co connect with. And I said, go back to them and just ask them if they could be more explicit in the subject line. Because if, if we can't change uh, the action, maybe we can tweak some of the behavior. So in that subject line, say not urgent, but important, and then the title. Put, put something in that subject line that alerts individuals on how they are expected to react to that communication so they can compartmentalize it. So, okay, good. I don't have to look at this right now. I can continue working on my project versus every time, because it's the leader, they were like, oh, we got to open, we got to open. Hope I didn't beat that down, but I want you to get the point that uh, communication can be challenging, but ask questions, be mindful of the content, and uh, if you make a mistake, say, oh, sorry, next time, um, should I just call you, right? So offer a suggestion as well. How are we feeling about the different communication tools? Is anybody going to be willing to ask more or, or do something different in the way that they're connecting? The one thing that I can add to that, um, because I've always had, I've always struggled with this because I prefer telephones. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer telephone over any, I mean, if I can't be in person. Yeah. Um, and so, and I've told people, please call me. You can call me anytime, Darren. If I'm not available, I'm not going to answer my phone. But if I'm available, I'll answer my phone. So don't think you're going to bother me. And, and, um, I've had people send me emails and say, I know you said to call you, but I didn't want to bother you. So I sent you this email. <laughs> so, it, you know, it's sort of like if somebody tells you that's how they prefer to communicate, listen. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're going to get the attention of right. that you need, especially right. if it's something that you need right away. Now, I have a friend who um, is the opposite. She's like, you know, I, I don't even listen to my voice messages. I, so she missed a message from me for three days. And uh, she missed out on a great party. I was like, see, that's why you need to check your messages. <laughs> but um, it helps us because you have to think about what your goal is with that communication. So if you want someone to take action, then you've got to uh, share it in a way that uh, they can receive it and take the action that you need. Thank you for sharing that, Marianne. The other thing uh, to be more productive is that it's important that you set healthy boundaries and habits. So again, have a designated uh, start and stop time. If that's how you get started, then we could take baby steps after that. But if just make a commitment. I'm gonna get started at eight, and no matter what, I'm gonna be done at four. And then be done with it. If you've, if you've thought it through and that, and that is what is going to help you to maintain your balance and happiness and fulfillment in your position, then stick to it. And don't feel guilty about it. The one thing that I recognize is right now we're all on the same plane. I don't care what business you are in, the, 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 everything's been leveled. So I'm like, Adrian, if you don't get that done today, well, you got tomorrow because nothing's changed. So at least while we're in this time of crises, make sure that you're taking care of yourself while you're taking care of others and your work. And that's why I say it's important that you feed your mind, your body, and your spirit. So if you're going back and forth to the refrigerator like me, you know what I say? Oh, well, you know, that was my breakdown. I don't feel guilty about it. I'm like, oh, okay, nothing's there or whatever. 
And if something's there, I eat it and enjoy, okay? But I try to eat healthier snacks. That's what I try to do. <laughs> so you want to set those healthy boundaries and take those breaks. And here's another thing. Um, oh, it's coming up. Managing distractions. So when I talk about managing distractions, you know, some of us have children at home or, you know, there's things going on that is really not conducive to a, a productive work environment. So one of the things that you can do is um, set, set time on your schedule to be uninterrupted. So although I just have um, my husband here because my children are all adults, I tell him, dear, I don't care what that, unless the house is on fire from 10 to 1230, I, just, I can't be disturbed because that's my strategy time or, or whatever it is. Um, so uh, think about what distractions you have and then make a solution for it. And I do that with everything, with everything. What am I trying to accomplish and what's the solution to get that accomplished? And once I say, okay, well, you know what? The kids are running around screaming, hollering. I'm not gonna be able to do anything about that. Then I don't get upset about it because I've thought about the different ways to manage it and it's just not possible. So when you get on that call, be honest and say, I'm trying to manage my children, but they may come in. So just, Understand that uh, I'm doing the best that I can in this environment. Honesty is the best policy. And then this is one that I like a lot. And that is developing what we call a hyper local community network. So before the crises, as an entrepreneur or as a, a someone that works alone a lot of the time, I was going crazy because I needed someone to talk to. So I developed a local community network. This is a group of me and some other business ladies and a couple guys sprinkle in and out that we, we talk regularly. I also have some uh, close associates that I can call and say, I'm gonna forward you an email. Can you look at this and tell me if it makes sense? So when you're working alone, your hyper local community does not have to be just the people you work with. They don't even have to be in the same industry, but they're just someone that you both, it's almost like you're mentoring each other, but individuals that you can bounce ideas off of. So one of my friends is a social media marketer. And we're always sharing ideas. If I come up with a, a program, I send her the link and say, can you go through and make sure the e emails auto respond? You know, you, you need that. Not only is it helpful for business and some of my hyper local, we just only talk. I have friends in Canada and uh, one friend uh, in Sri Lanka I had, I was like, oh, this is, was too much. <laughs> but, because uh, of time zones and all kinds of craziness. But literally, I, I was able to develop a community relationship with that person because we had uh, beneficial needs of one another. So not only do you work with individuals and your hyper-local community can help you with uh, business-minded uh, challenges that you might be having, but the motivation part is, is key and essential. Those same partners where we could be talking one minute about, hey, here's a great program that you can try. That same part is like, Adrian, I don't know about you, but I had a rough day, right? You need somebody that you can spill that off on so they encourage you or you encourage them because you're going to have, this is, what, this is what's happening. We are now on an emotional roller coaster. I'm gonna be honest with you all. Yesterday morning, I was like, I can do this, I can do this. And in the afternoon, I was crying, real tears. Because it was my granddaughter's eighth birthday yesterday. We drove down and I did the drive by. I you know, put balloons on the house and I made a sign for me, mom and pop pop. And then when she came, I couldn't hug her. And it tore me up. 
the reality of what we're dealing with. So then, you know, I can't hold on to that because then I won't get my work done. I won't be productive. I, I got to get back to life uh, to keep things moving. And so I called a friend and I was like, Ooh, let it out. Thanks to my hyper-local community. And you could keep moving on because it, it is uh, an emotional time for us. And we, we need to have people that we can depend on. You need a support network. Who's got a support network? If you don't have one, get one. You can start with me, but it's important for your overall success. So last but not least, it is important to inspire your workspace. I don't care if you've only got a corner of the kitchen table, make it your space. Set a, set, uh, nail up a, a inspirational quote, print it out on, you know, eight by 11 paper and, and put your favorite quote up. Um, I've got one that says, um, every day, I strive to be better than the day before. Like that's one of my inspirational quotes that I have tacked up on my board. Behind me, you can't see because I have this luxurious uh, condo background. <laughs> but behind me is a sign that says, just a girl boss building her empire. Why? Because I need that inspiration around me to drive me forward. So. Put a plant on the side. Do whatever you need to do uh, to inspire your space. And, and then put in uh, some kind of organizational system. Even if it's just something you, you, you pull out in, the, in the, the morning and then you pack up at night. Make it your own. Now, I've heard about um, the uh, owners of WordPress. How about this, folks? They are so uh, understanding of the impact of inspiring your workspace on your creativity and your productivity that they give their employees $2,000 to lay out their home offices. Now, I don't think any of our companies are going to be doing that. But you know what I told folks? I said, ask your boss for $150. So you can buy a plant, so you can buy a picture, so that you can get, you know, a, a little cute mouse pad and, and design your space. I think it's the same as office supplies, right? Maybe you never know what the boss might say. But if the boss doesn't do it for you, do it for yourself. And then inspire your space by moving around. So some people have the raised desk. I literally have one of those ball chairs. Now I am, look, I'm only on that thing, I'm gonna be honest, once a month for about 10 minutes because I feel silly. <laughs> and you know, you have to have that pain before the game and I can't get past the pain part. So I, I'm not as good with that, but other people, it works for them. There's studies that prove that. Uh, you can get an inversion table. I have a friend who has an inversion table in his office and he literally gets on it and he does this for like 15 minutes a day. It's a way that he takes his break, but it's also a way that he shifts his energy and that increases his productivity. You can do some chair yoga. When I work with uh, teams on their wellness programs, I bring in an expert and we sit there and do the, do the chair yoga, stretching your neck all the way to the right sitting up straight, breathing exercises. Because if this is our new normal for, we don't know how long, take advantage of the opportunities that it presents and embrace it. And one of the things that I'm finding from so many individuals that I'm talking to, the, the things that people used to complain about, I said, you know what? Find a solution for it. Now you've got more time to, to think about those things that were an annoyance. You know, that, that system wasn't working properly. Maybe you have time now to figure, figure that out and, and, and find ways to help your organization because that is key. Now is the time if you embrace working 
remotely that you can showcase your ability to be flexible, to be productive, to encourage others, look for opportunities to mentor someone who's struggling. And even if you um, just call them up and say, hey, I don't know about you, but this remote worker thing, I'm trying to get the hang of it. Give them an opportunity to share. There's things that we can do as leaders to support our teams. One of those things is to create a social space for your teams. So at the beginning of a remote meeting, take, take five to 10 minutes for them to get to know one another a little better. Here's my favorite book. One of my favorite books. Oh, let me put it in front. Patrick Lencioni. Anybody familiar with this book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team? One of the challenges that individuals have in working in teams is trusting others. So if you create this social space where people can start to get to know each other a little better, that improves their trust in one another and that ultimately uh, can impact their relationships, how they start to work together, collaborate, and so forth. So there's many opportunities uh, for us to be successful. I know I shared a lot about different things and ways that you can do it. So don't think that you have to say, okay, Adrian gave me 12 tips and I'm, I'm going, I'm doing all 12. No, don't do that. You're going to burn out. You're going to be like, that was a bunch of crap. <laughs> Start small. Take one thing and then implement that. And as you gain momentum with that, do another thing and gain momentum and keep going. That's how you grow. That's how you uh, start to see your progress and your success. And then celebrate, yes, I got less distractions this week. Yes, I had great communication with my team this week. Terrific, I'm feeling better since I'm now taking that 52 minutes uh, break and, and, and relaxing my mind. Yeah, you know, celebrate and keep moving forward. So what are you gonna do differently? Based on what we shared today, that's the one thing that I want you to think about. I'm gonna throw up another book. This is another one of my favorite books, The One Thing by Gary Keller. The surprisingly simple truth behind result, extraordinary results. The one thing in that book is what I shared in the beginning. Why it's important to define one thing that you wanna accomplish and then start backing into it. So what can I do this year to accomplish this one thing? What can I do this over the next six months? What can I do over the next three months to accomplish this one thing? What can I do next week? What can I do today? So if you take that approach and achieving your goals, you're gonna hit a home run. So Caitlin, thank you for this opportunity. We can, we can uh, talk about some, some questions I wanted to share with individuals. If you wanna get uh, the ebook, you can go here or go to my website to get those other resources. I'll stop sharing now and let you have it back. So if anyone has any questions, any comments, you can definitely write them in the chat box or if you wanna just do the raise your hand function so then that way we don't have 10 people trying to talk all at once. So then that way we can um, just get a good conversation going or if not, we can all enjoy the rest of our day. Any questions, comments for Adrian? You might wanna mute everyone, unmute everyone. So someone, uh, yeah, so Derek, if you want, you can unmute to speak. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hey, so very nice job. Thank you for taking the time to share that with us. Um, and I'm sure as many of the people on this call 
probably struggle with it running a small business. I have trouble turning off. So this has actually exacerbated that problem for me. Oh. And now it's like um, I'm actually working seven days a week. And it's like you talked about boundaries. I don't know what to do to, to put up boundaries oh. for my personal life, let alone my business, because it's nonstop thinking about business. And I'm sure many of the people can probably identify with what I'm saying. So yes. maybe could you just expand upon that a little more? Absolutely. Uh, thank you for raising that. I am in the same boat as every other entrepreneur where I am uh, looking for ways to survive. And uh, so you can easily, easily get caught up in the trap of just working, working, and working. But you, I'm going to go back to what I said in the presentation. You have to set a start and stop time. Uh, figure out what, what it ultimately is you want to get done. Start with one day. Just what do I want to get done today? And then just focus on that and give yourself a timeline. I'm only going to work on, on, on these goals for today for eight hours, no matter what. But then give yourself a reward afterwards. That's how I stay motivated. So if I'm going to stick to my guns, then afterwards, I don't know what it is. You know, I give myself rewards as I'm, I'm, I'm going to order out. I'm not cooking. Because <laughs> cooking is punishment to me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I find a way to reward myself. And sometimes the reward is only emotional. I have a talk with myself. I'm like, Adrian, you did a good job. You stuck to your guns today. I do a whole lot of talking to myself. There are studies that prove that positive self-talk works. It, 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 it helps you uh, uh, emotionally, and then those emotional benefits help us physically. Because when we are not uh, managing our mindset, we start having stress, anxiety. So what can you do when you start to have those feelings? I teach a class called Emotional Intelligence. And I tell people, you have to take your emotional temperature. You can start by doing this every 30 minutes. Stopping and saying, how am I feeling? If I'm feeling anxious, if I'm feeling frustrated, why am I feeling that way? I'm feeling that way because, you know, I, I don't like this crisis that I'm in. What can you do about that? I can't do anything about this crisis, but I can change my emotions. And how do I change my emotions? Okay, I will put on my Beyonce and dance around my office. I will read something inspirational. I will call my mother. Whatever it is I need to do to change my mindset is what I do. That is a constant process. You don't do it, just do it one time a day. I'm doing it over and over throughout my day to manage how I'm feeling. And how do I know when I'm off? Cause I'm nasty to myself. I'm like, Ugh. you know, I'm just not on. Or my husband is like, uh, you need to go back in there and get your attitude together. <laughs> he puts me back in time out in my office. I'm like, okay, sorry. And I'm kind of joking about that, but I'm not joking. You have, to, you have to be really intentional. So I want to encourage you, Derek, to set, start and top, stop sign start and stop times and then celebrate well, that's great advice and i guess that the part is that to not feel guilty when you're not working because you feel like there's so much to be done you feel like you could always do more and that's the that's the part that becomes like dangerous yes mm -hmm. and that's why it's important to say what am i going to do today so that you could break out of that habit because what we're thinking about is all all the stuff we have to do. So that's when it becomes overwhelming. But one of my favorite quotes is, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So I'm gonna take a bite here and a bite here. And before I know it, I've gotten to what I want to accomplish. But that, you know what some of that is? I'm not putting this on you. I'm saying it for myself. Some of it is fear. We're, we're, we don't know what's happening. 
happening and, 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 and we're being impacted in such a way. So accept and embrace that emotion. I've learned fear is the same emotion. Oh, I, I can't remember who, who I learned this from, uh, some psychologist. But fear is the same emotion as excitement. Did you know that? I it's just that we interpret it differently. But when you are fearful, you, your hand, your heart starts racing, your palms get sweaty, you know, you get jittery. Those are the same things you feel when you're excited. So I've taught myself based on psychological learning that I have to look at that fear as, uh, as excitement because that helps me to move forward. You get the same power boost from fear that you get from excitement. So I, I flip it and say, now what can I do? And I'm gonna share this one other thing. I hope you don't mind. But when I decided that I was gonna become an entrepreneur and walk away a six figure salary position where I had benefits, stock options, and all that great stuff, I did what's called the fear exercise. And the fear exercise is saying, what, is, what, what am I fearful about? And what can I do about it? So the fear that I had at that time was that my business wouldn't be successful. It would collapse. And then the next question was, what could I do about it? I went down and wrote an inventory. I said, well, if it fails, I'm a smart chick. I can find another job. My life is not over. You know, I went through, if I'm not successful, what were my opportunities? So that kept my fear at bay because the problem we have is we constantly think over and over, oh my God, if I fail. So now it went from, I don't have to think about, oh my God, if I fail, I already know if I fail, this, this is what I, these are the opportunities I have. So I keep driving forward. And here's, here's some statistics for you. They say that 90% of the things that we worry about never even happen. Think about the things that you worried about that you almost made yourself sick over that never happened. From this whole situation, you know, this is the first time I, I can say, you know, I said before, well, you know, if I fail, you know, I'm not going to die. This situation, I can die. So this is a different kind of fear. We all can die if we get this virus. This is so real, but I can't focus on that. But when I say focused on my goals, and I'm not saying that I don't feel, I'm a grandmother. I have two children that work in healthcare. I've never prayed so much in my life, but I don't dwell on it. And when I have those moments, I use some of my strategies to kick back in the gear. Is it tough? Yes, but I do it anyway. Well, I appreciate that very thoughtful response, and I, I hope that other people can identify with that, too, because that, that's definitely been a challenge for me. But thank you very much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I'm sorry, was someone going to say something? Let me put my glasses on. I can't see the thing. Yeah, that's okay. Hi, this is uh, Rosanna. Um, thank you so much for all the information you've provided. But uh, yes, to someone else's uh, that uh, actually had that question, yes, it applies to all of us small entrepreneurs and trying to start a business and trying to think of all the worriness that, um, and the things that are out of control at this moment. So, um, you know, like everybody else, I try to wake up with a positive attitude every morning, um, you know, try to exercise is my first thing to start my morning and to get going and to kind of sort of get um, some of the stress pressure off of me. Mm -hmm. You're doing the right things. We just have to keep doing them over and over. Correct. <laughs> can you read Robin's comment? I can. So it says, would vision boards also be something under goal setting? If so, how can you start? Oh my. Uh, listen, <laughs> I'm a strong believer. If you don't have a vision for your work or your career, where are you going? Like you have to have some insight 
on what you want your, your life and your work to be. And if you don't have that, uh, I, I, in my book, I talk about how people just get conformed to discomfort. You are just moving and moving and moving and, and where are you going? Think, you know, you, you get things by happenstance. Those people who understand what they want out of life, it's like anything. If you set a destination, then you can route out and map out the path to get there. And visions, vision boarding is not just like, oh, fluffy dreams. Oh, no. I mean, some of the most successful people, Oprah Winfrey still does vision boarding. It is a way to say, this is what I want to achieve. If you think about all your different goals, financial, social, career, life, you, you, you map out community involvement. You, you say, this, this is where I want to be. And then you, and then you, it, you do the things to, to make it manifest. That's not hokey pokey. That's real life stuff. I'm going to put this out here. I got dreams of being, you know, like on a stage. Well, with thousands of people in the crowd. That's what your vision keeps you motivated. Now, I don't know about that vision too much anymore. Okay. <laughs> Maybe thousands of people on Zoom, whatever it is. <laughs> but I sure you should you should you should, you should if you if you are not dreaming, you are not living. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Adrian, I think that while this is, you know, probably the darkest time of a, lo a lot of our lives, yeah. you just hit on something because your dream is to be on stage with thousands and thousands of people. And now, seriously, with technology, you have that opportunity. And so this is a step towards that. So there are, you know, how many of us on this call, but that can grow and it, it might present a bigger opportunity. So I hope and pray that you get your wish and that you get your dream because I think you're working hard towards it. So. Yeah. I mean, there were 17 people on this call and it was an amazing presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then we can say we knew you way back when, when you were on the uh, Women Influencing Business, uh, the keynote, when we had that conference and you were on that yeah. stage. We can say we knew her way back then. <laughs> Lord willing, Lord willing, we will all achieve our dreams, you know, and that's what my goal is to help other people achieve their goals. So I love that. I loved great. your opening line. <laughs> Being passionate about other people's success. That's a great one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so you are very inspiring. I would say very inspiring, and I respect you very much, ma'am. Oh, thank you. And, and I, okay, I'm, do I look like, he didn't call me ma'am. Okay. Miss, <laughs> miss I'm sorry. I, my dad raised me that way. Miss, I apologize. No, 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 no. No, I'm just, I'm just fooling with you because I do the same thing. I'm like ma'am insert of folks because mm -hmm. I, I've been raised by a Southern mother. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I completely identify with so much of what you shared. So it's amazing. That's great. Derek, email me and I'm going to gift you a copy of my book. So for those of you, as we get ready to close, my book is Fit for Success, Be a Fearless, Inspire, Transform for Success. It uh, was number 38 on Amazon and uh, it has been adopted into the Library of Congress in Washington, DC in the social sciences section. Nice. Wonderful. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So you, you can Sorry. grab a copy on Amazon and uh, the audio book is available as well. But Derek, you're going to email me and I'm going to send you a copy of my book, be, you know, because you called me ma'am and you were so kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will absolutely, Emily. Thank you again for all your time and presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Kate, thank you, Jordan, I jumped off. I have a call at 12, but thank you so much. I learned a lot today. Thank you. Great. So and thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you once again to Adrian. It was an amazing presentation. 
I hope everyone takes away from this presentation like I am. Um, if you need anything, please feel free to email the chamber. Feel free to email Adrian. Um, we hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and well, and sane um, during this time. Uh, we will just have to push through it. So once again, if you need anything, please feel free to reach out. Um, if not, we will try to get this posted online so you can review it. And then also Adrian has the um, little handout that we can also get online. Yes, I'll send that to you and then you can send it out to the meeting attendees. Great, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Shelly. Bye. <laughs> So that was good. It was. Are you good, Marion? Did you get it? It's muted. Yeah.